We've been putting out more covers on the channel this year, and I'm not just talking about Justin for Cybands, to where it's my guitar and the actual track record through the audio of my GoPro. I am talking about fully produced tracks, like the Fake You Out cover I did this year, like the Ole Miss Believer cover, like the Anathema cover, like the Christmas Aves of the Year cover I did in December, or the Anathema cover last July, or the Truce Fingerstyle cover I did last April, as well as the original songs like Julia's Ghost, and I have more covers cooking as well as more original songs cooking. I love recording music, I love playing guitar, I love playing bass, love recording those and learning new recording techniques. I love running live sound. I went to college for commercial music because I love it so, so much. And anytime I publish one of these fully produced tracks and put it on YouTube, I always leave a comment saying, hey, if you want to know how I made the song, just thumbs up this comment and I'll make a video on it. And there's been enough interest so I can start this series on how I record music that I might do once a month, every other week. I still need to find time. But I figured today when we kick off the series, We'll start off with the essentials, which is the gear you need to start recording music at your home. So I'm super excited to start this series. Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, depending on when you're watching this, how's it going guys? First off, I hope you're having a good day today. Hope your day is going well and hope it continues to go well. Let's get right into it and well, we can't exactly stay here. So let's go over to my studio space. Let's go. This is where the magic happens, right over here in the corner of my room. This is where I practice bass, practice guitar, record music, edit videos. I shoot videos over there and sleep in that bed, but I have a dedicated work spot right over here in the corner of my room. And that is honestly the biggest tip I can give is have a dedicated work spot somewhere. Now it's not essential. I can do record, you can do recording anywhere. I do recording sometimes in my bed. I sometimes do recording over across the other side of the room, the other room where I film just for a side band. I even record downstairs. Sometimes I record in my kitchen because we can record anywhere. But I find having a dedicated spot to where you practice, where you record music and just have fun definitely gets that creative juices flowing, definitely gets you in the headspace of I'm going to record, I'm going to make some music, and it definitely helps the flow of everything. So definitely a huge tip I have, and it's not essential whatsoever, but having a dedicated work spot definitely helps so much. The first thing you're going to need to start recording music at home is an electronic device of some kind, which odds are you're watching this on an electronic device, meaning you meet that qualification. Personally, myself, I use this MacBook Pro. Sometimes I'll use my MacBook Air, but you don't need a MacBook to record music. If you have a PC, that'll work fantastic. If you have a Chromebook, that'll work great. If you have any form of laptop, it will work amazingly. If you have a tablet, most likely you can record music on there. I mean, if you have a phone, you can record music on there. Literally, it's never been easier to record music in any other time in history. You could pull out your phone, write a full song, and boom, you can make a whole album on here. It is crazy. So most uh, electronic devices you can record music off of. If you're watching this on PlayStation or Xbox, I don't think you record, you can record music on there, but if you have a computer of some kind, like your phone, like a tablet, like a laptop, you can, or just a big PC, you can record music on there. The next thing you're going to need is something that will capture and key store all the audio that you record. These are called digital audio workstations, DAWs or DAWs. You will see those terms interchangeably, but they all do the same thing. These is where it, you actually make your song houses all the audio and you fully produce and mix within these softwares and there are many 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 DAWs out there it can be slightly intimidating Personally, myself, I use Logic Pro X, which is an Apple exclusive thing. Basically, it's GarageBand just souped up to the max. This is what a lot of people use. There are producers who solely 
use Logic. One of my favorite guitar player, Sarah Longfield, she uses Logic products. 21 Pilots, they use Logic and then they'll bump things into Pro Tools. We'll talk about Pro Tools in a moment. But if you have an Apple device, you have a free one that's built in called GarageBand. And GarageBand, there have been full albums produced on GarageBand. I absolutely love it. Anytime I'm using my MacBook Air, I will pull up GarageBand because it is amazing. But you don't need these Apple exclusive things to record music. If you don't want to use GarageBand, that's fine. If you don't want to use Logic, that is fine. There are so many options out there. There's stuff like FL Studios. There's stuff such as Cubase. There's Ableton Live and the many different versions of that. There's Pro Tools, which is the industry standard, but I'll be honest with you, Pro Tools kind of sucks. And there are, is everything in between, and there are free DAWs out there also. Again, iOS people, you have GarageBand, but for those who don't, you have stuff such as Reaper, which is like Cubase. It is like Pro Tools, but a junior version of it. It works great, and there are producers who do use Reaper to its full extent. You download it, it'll give you a 30 day free trial, but if it's still evaluating, boom, it's yours forever. There's no free trial anymore. You are just still evaluating for free. Yes, there's the paid version, but no one really pays for it. Everyone mainly just uses the free version. There's also stuff such as Audacity, which is great also. And these all range in prices from the free to the cheap, to the middle ground, to the really expensive Twitch. If you're going really expensive, odds are you're looking at Pro Tools. Don't know why you would do that, but there are so many things. However, you can save a little bit of money by not immediately purchasing a DAW, by purchasing this next thing, which is an essential to record most music. Essential piece of gear number three, you're going to need an audio interface. Basically, this is the middleman of what you're recording versus your computer. So whatever you're recording, whether that be your electric guitar, your bass, your vocals, mandolin, ukulele, your marimba, your snare drum, whatever you're recording, this is gonna to convert to little tiny pieces of information. It's gonna go into your DAW, it's gonna be a waveform, and boom, everything is recorded. All audio interfaces, they work the same. They all come with inputs. Some have just uh, two inputs, like this one has one for an XLR, one for a quarter inch. This has two, two quarter inches as well as two XLRs built into it. There are ones with many different inputs and they all vary, but they all basically do the same thing. They record your instruments, they all come with these inputs. They all come in places where you can plug your headphones in and listen to what you're recording and or convert what you're, what you're listening into the Dawn here. They have places where you can input your monitors. You can plug monitors into this. These have gain, gain switches to which basically controls the volume of what is being recorded to make sure everything is loud enough to be recorded. Make sure you're not clipping, which is basically distorting the sound of what's being recorded as well as phantom power to pick up condenser microphones. More on those later. And there are many, many, just like DAWs, there are many audio interface companies out there. And actually, a lot of them will come with free software such as DAWs. Both of these came with a version of Ableton Live, which is pretty sure is 90 bucks, Ableton Live Lite. This one came with a free version of Pro Tools. This one came with plugins and software. Like, the, there are so many audio interfaces that will put certain, certain deals within their audio interface where it will give you a free DAW. It will give you plugins. There are so many cool deals with audio interfaces and they are so cool. Personally, I do use these two. This is the Focusrite Scarlet Solo. This was my first audio interface. Absolutely loved it, got Ableton out of it. This is the one I've been using since I upgraded the Solid State Logic SSL2. I'll put both these down in the links in the description box below, as well as other DAW, I mean, as well as audio, other audio interfaces and some other things that will help guide you in your audio recording journey. All these will be links to Amazon and they are affiliate links, so if you do purchase anything, I I will get a small commission and I'm gonna be honest, this is gonna come into upgrading this little studio space over here. Of course, there are other sites such as Musicians Friend, Guitar Center, Sweetwater, you can get them from also, but I will put links down in the description box to help guide you. So audio interface essential, especially if it comes with other software such as DAWs. Essential piece of gear number four is something you should have in 
bulk, especially if you play guitar and bass, because it's cables. You're going to need a lot of cables, not just your standard quarter inches, but you're going to need a lot of XLR cables. Now, again, the market is completely vast. There are so many brands of cables, so it is a completely personal preference thing, but definitely get a good quality cable. It's really tell, easy to tell a good quality cable from bad cable because there will be excess noise. There will be buzzing. Personally, I, there are many companies I like when it comes to guitar cables. Ernie Ball, they make a super great guitar cable. Again, that link will be down in the description box. Even these ones, these aren't the most expensive, but they still work. These are G uh, GLS audio cables and they work fantastically. I gig with these. I do love them so much. And these are a quarter inches. So basically, they are these kind of ends, mainly used to record anything that has an input jack, such as guitars, basses, some ukuleles, acoustic guitars, anything like that. So then you're going to need XLR cables, to which basically these have pins in there and they have holes and they can plug together like that, pull apart like that. These are going to be used for all most of your microphones and a good co company for XLR cables is Hosa. Literally my job, you at work, we use Hosa cables all the time because they are super reliable. They're super durable. And again, many different companies that make these XLR cables, but I personally prefer Hosa. The next essential piece of gear is going to be, well, your instrument, whether you play electric guitar, electric bass, a ukulele with a pickup in it, a, a acoustic electric guitar, even your keyboard that can take an input jack, you are ready to go. You just need to plug your instrument cable from your guitar, bass, whatever, into your dot and boom, you're ready to go. But what if you want to mic up your guitar cab? What if you have a true acoustic guitar that has no electronics on it? What if you play just a normal ukulele and or you want to record vocals? Well, it's time to talk about microphones, which can be a very scary world, but I'm going to help you the best that I can. So there are two kind of microphones that I'm going to recommend. There are condenser microphones and there are dynamic microphones to which they sound scary, but let me explain. We'll start off with condenser microphones, which I really, really recommend. So basically these, they pick up everything that is going right in front of it at a slight angle to it. Basically anything that's in front of it is going to record. I'm standing right behind it. So if it's record, what was that? If it's, if it's recording, it's not gonna pick up anything that is behind it because it picks up everything that's right in front and some of these they will have switches such as a minus 10 db switch which is great for if you're recording anything that's loud like if you're recording your guitar cabinet your guitar air bass amplifier you can just stick this right in front of it hit that minus 10 db switch crank your amp and boom you are ready to go then it has then some have this little roll off knob which can get rid of the low end some you can change the pickup pattern so it can record in front you can do both sides you can pick up all like everything that is around it condensers are a pretty powerful thing they run off of phantom power which on our little audio interfaces back here i mentioned that it has phantom power this mine's this 48 volt switch. You turn that on, you plug your condenser microphone in there, boom, you are set to go. If you don't get fan power to it, it's not going to record. The good thing is that most audio interfaces, they come with a switch for phantom power. These are great for recording vocals, for recording any acoustic instruments. Literally, I have used this microphone, the MXL770, for years and I love it to death. It was great for recording, even just voice overs. I've used it for video calls. It is great. I absolutely love it so, so much. The other microphone is dynamic microphones. These basically, 
don't require phantom power. So if you have your phantom power turned on your audio interface, turn it off or else you will damage it. These are fine just to plug into your audio interfaces and boom, you are good to go. These pick up sound just directly of what's in front of it. There's no going out to the sides. It is literally what's right in front of it. If I'm holding it like this and if you're off to the side, it's going to get really quiet because it picks up everything that's in front. It's dynamic. These are great for recording guitar cabinets. These are great for recording acoustic instruments. There are people like Andrew Huang who record vocals on these. Basically, if you get yourself a good condenser microphone and or a good dynamic microphone, you will be really set. This is one of the industry standard uh, dynamic microphones, the Shure SM57. Absolutely love this thing and it's great. I, I've sung into it at college. We've mic'd my guitar amp at college. We've mic'd a piano with this. Literally, you can do so much with the Shure SM57. There are other great options such as the Shure SM58 as well. There are many options. Again, I'll link some in the description box below. Again, Amazon affiliate links, commission, more money to the studio, more money for upgrades, yay. There's actually a third option when it comes to microphones and that is USB microphones. Those a lot of people love. People swear by the mini snowball microphones. There are ones that are beloved. There are people who do use them for recording. Personally, I prefer the ones that you can plug to your audio interface, but USB microphones are great because you just plug in the USB to your computer. You don't need to worry about a signal path. You just need to make sure that USB is working and boom, you are good to go. So it's a really viable option, especially if you want to save yourself a couple of bucks. USB microphones are great. However, I prefer di dynamic mics. I prefer condenser mics, anything that connects to my audio interface. I prefer, but it's completely personal preference. All right, so you got your microphone, you're ready to record some vocals. You record some vocals and they don't sound good. Like it's very reverby. There are a lot of plosives in there. There's a lot of puh, puh sounds in there. You want to cut back on those. You're not quite sure how to cut back on the reverberations of your room either. Well, it's time for me to get this big guy from the back. So the first thing you're going to need is a mic stand because you want to have a good posture when you're singing, whether that's sitting down, whether that's standing up, you want to have good posture to make sure your microphone is right in front of your face when you record. Cut To cut down on those plosives, those, pop, those annoying pops you get, you're going to need a pop filter. Basically, this is just a form of mesh and it cuts down on those annoying BP sounds and it cuts down them so much where they aren't annoying anymore. And there are a lot of pop filters out there. Some range to cheap. This one was 13 bucks. There are some expensive ones that can go to 50 bucks, but there's an even cheaper option that you actually have most likely on you, which is a sock. I've used a sock as a pop filter for years. It's been my emergency pop filter if I just want to record vocals really quick and I don't have this hooked up to anything because the sock really does super well, especially if it's a thin sock, like a dress sock of some sort. These work as great pop filters. Now to cut out on the reverberations of your room, basically sound, if your room's not treated, which most likely your room's not acoustically treated, sound will bounce from every single surface, whether that be the floor, the ceiling, the su this side, this side, your windows, TV, whatever is in your room, there's gonna be stuff that bounces and absorbs sound and you can get a lot of annoying reverb in there. You see a lot of home recorders record music in their closet because there's a lot of stuff to absorb the sound. More sound absorption, the better because there's less reverberations. So the cut down on, on reverberations in an untreated room, you can certainly go ahead and record in your closet. A lot of people do that. And or you can get one of these little tiny reverberation shields. Basically all of this is, is foam. There's foam 
all around it and it cuts out on reflections almost like you are singing into your closet like you are singing in a vocal booth these are called vo uh, portable vocal booths and you in some of them you can shape the form of them you can make them all certain shapes you can close it out like that personally i prefer it like this so that way it cuts out everything that's going to the side it's picking up everything that's going in four in front of it and i put the pop filter on like this and it gets rid of both the reverberation gets rid of the plosives I call this the vocal booth tabernacle I absolutely love it it's been what I've been recording to for the past month and definitely an essential on cutting back on the reverberations cutting back on the plosives other than that that should solve most of your vocal solutions when you don't like the sound of how the way you recorded your vocals and now the last piece of essential gear you need is actually two things. However, I could only speak about one of these things. So I am gonna lump both these things together and that is monitors and headphones. Now you can see behind me, there are no monitors whatsoever. Just for the sheer fact of, I really have no space for big monitors. And that's what most people mix the, and master their music on, is they sit in front of monitors, have it point perfectly right at them. They can perfectly listen to their track and they can produce and mix music that way. But you don't need monitors when you are starting out like myself. I've recorded some pretty decent sounding tracks without the use of monitors and I've only had these pair of headphones these over-ear headphones are very essential i'm going to recommend these ones right here i swear by them these are the industry standard in the podcast world these are the sony mdr 7506s these are under 100 bucks if i remember correctly and i swear by these these are the best they are completely flat in the sense that the bass isn't raised on them like you have a lot of headphones and earbuds where the bass is cranked you have some where their treble is cranked the mid-range is cranked but these are completely flat so you get a nice even sound and you can mix a lot better with these especially if you have a plug-in from waves such as the abbey road studios plug-in into or the chris lord algae uh whatever his plugin is or the nashville ones where it simulates a pair of studio monitors if you get a, these pair of headphones and plus those plugins and or just even these headphones you can make some pretty great sounding tracks just by mixing with these headphones on i swear by these like they are amazing and i'm going to talk about one more thing this is an essential but it really does come in handy and that is a MIDI controller of some kind. So basically, you plug this into your computer and I need to unplug it. But basically, you can plug it to your computer and you can control MIDI with this. So if your computer has a built-in MIDI sound, such as a keyboard, a trumpet, saxophone, drum set, just plug in a MIDI keyboard and boom, you have all those controls of all of those sounds. And best part some uh, electronic keyboards you can just plug into your computer and you can use that as a midi instrument and some midi instruments come with some software themselves such as this one right here this is the atoria key lab essentials 49 again this came with a free version of ableton live as well as some really great software to bring get amazing synth amazing piano sounds off of there and it's great and there are again a wide range of them. There are some really good cheap ones, such as the Akai ones. They are super good. Also, there's a mini Korg one. There's a smaller version of this. And a mini keyboard really does help if you want to do some tracks of stuff you don't have and you don't want to use the, the keyboard of your computer. Mini keyboards definitely help a lot. And then sometimes this is how I work. This is how I've been recording drums because it's just so easy just to punch in notes and then quantize. So it's not really essential. You can get away without it, but definitely 
get one if you can. And that is basically it, except for you guitar players. If you want to spotlight something you should definitely get that will definitely help your family be less annoyed with you, help your neighbors be less annoyed with you, and help you with tone because the getting an amp sim software for your computer will do wonders. Like there are so many great amp sims out there. I use a lot of True Slate's Overloud. There's some great ones in there. The Archetype series is fantastic. They just released the John Petrucci one. The Nolly, fantastic. Love that one. The Corey Wong one, super great. Positive Grid has one. PRS has one. There are so many different amp sims out there. It's definitely worth getting because you can practice with an amp with headphones on and it's great. It'll help annoy you, your family, your neighbors less. It's essential. But anyway, that is all the essential gear you need to start recording music at home. Again, some of this is situational. If you're a drummer, it's preferred to have a microphone on each pizza kit, but you can get away with just using one microphone. And yeah, that's it for the video. I'm going to make this series maybe like once a month, every other week. Let me know what you guys want to see from the series. Maybe next time we'll get into looking at how I made certain tracks, but we'll go from there when we get there. Anyway guys, I'm gonna go take the trash out. My voice is getting dry, so I'm gonna go get some water and I'm going to bed early because I'm super tired. But also, let me know if you like this area. Maybe I'll just start recording my Tony Old Pilot videos here standing up as well and or just at the desk. We'll do work at the workstation. But anyway guys, I'll see you all later. I really hope this was helpful. Goodbye, and more importantly, have a good day and I'll see you later.